Good morning, Sean here at Mountains Garage. It's been a great week, it went by really quick. During the week I received four viewer suggestions about subject matter for future videos, including this one. I, on my playlist, have 15 or so Turbo 400 videos about all kinds of different subject matter, but never once did I talk about how it works. So let's do that. I'm not gonna get super technical. I'm hoping this is a relatively quick video. It just gives you an idea of what does what. And while it's specific to the Turbo 400, it pretty much applies to all automatic transmissions. They'll select some or all of the same parts, maybe put them in different places, but in the end, they all kind of do the same thing. So, here we go. I'm not a school teacher, but I'll try my best to make it understandable and fun. So let's give it a shot. Let's start with the torque converter. I don't believe there's another piece inside the vehicle more mysterious than this welded round donut that you can't see inside. And you always wonder what's in there. It has three important pieces and to visualize, let's picture you have a house fan that you use in the summertime to blow cool air on you. You have it set up, it's hooked to the engine, so it's turning at engine speed. You have another fan opposite that's hooked down through the transmission to your tires. When you speed this one up, it's going to turn this one. That's a torque converter in the most basic terms. However, in an actual torque converter, the way the fins on the pump, the turbine, and then there's one more piece called the stator, which redirects the oil coming off the turbine. In a torque converter, the throwing oil actually turns clockwise into counterclockwise rotation and then through the stator fins redirects it back so it's efficient. If it didn't do that, it would become inefficient again. It would work against itself. The fins of the stator redirecting the oil back so the whole process can start over again. GM even tried, if anybody's ever heard of the switch pitch converter, they had a solenoid and a valve and they could change the efficiency of the stator. You had low pitch and high pitch. One get making the converter very tight and efficient and the other one making it loose and allowing the engine to rev more easily. Nowadays all the rage is a bolt together torque converter and the piece you change is the stator. You're redirecting the oil in a way that either loads the engine more or less. So in, a, in a effect, that's how a torque converter works. Of course, heat is created when you're throwing all this oil around. So the next step out of here is the cooler. So let's grab another piece and talk about it. We're going to talk about power flow, so I'm going to try to be right down through the transmission, but we've got to cover a few more hydraulic things first. But wait, I almost forgot an important benefit of all that throwing oil around and moving clockwise to counterclockwise is this can multiply torque up to two to one. Now the clutch inside your bell housing on a manual transmission is just a straight one to one transfer. This can actually multiply torque. So imagine that. We're gonna talk about the pump next, but while we're right here, the case itself is a marvelous piece of engineering. It houses the pump, redirects the pump input and output out to the cooler and back, through the control valve or the valve body, some hydraulic circuits. The case is a really busy place. Oh yeah, and it also holds up your engine and transmission through the mount on the back and bolted to the engine on the front. There's a lot going on in that little piece of aluminum. The front pump is driven by the lugs and the torque converter, which is bolted to the engine. So if the engine's running, your pump is turning, it's sucking fluid and making pressure. The pressure is regulated through the pressure control valve, which also has a boost circuit in stock form, which is directly connected to the vacuum modulator, which is hooked to your engine and it senses load. That's what a vacuum modulator does on a transmission. And it tells the transmission, in this case, how much pressure to make. and also tells the valve body when to shift. Most performance valve bodies do away with the modulating feature of the pressure regulator and there's a spring and shims 
and associated components that set it at a fixed PSI, typically around 200 pounds. Let's move on to the valve body. It takes the pressurized oil, and when you control it from your shifter with the manual valve, it redirects the oil in stock form against spring-loaded valves, which receive input from the vacuum modulator sensing engine load, and the governor, which is geared onto the output shaft so it knows road speed. It matches up engine load and road speed and the spring pressure already predetermined in the valve body at a certain point the pressure that is released from those two guys will overcome the spring sending oil out to the next gear through passages and of course we've all done shift kits and modifications where you change the spring pressure which makes it hotter or easier to overcome and you can enlarge holes to send more oil faster Lots of things to be done here, but basically, you're in control of it, and it is in control of the transmission. Manual valve body, it does exactly what you tell it to do. We don't need any of that stuff. If you put it in first, second, or third, that's what you're going to get at any speed. Moving on to the mechanical pieces of the Turbo 400, we'll start with the lower gear unit. This occupies the lower half of the transmission. You'll see two spline shafts sticking out the front, a large and a small. We'll see what drives them in a minute. The center support bolted to the case is one of the big secrets why the Turbo 400 is so strong. Remaining external, you'll see a flat surface on the, on the reaction carrier where the rear band can grab and stop that rotation. And inside that you can't see are two Planet gears rotating around sun gears. Just like the name implies, when you take a trip around the sun, it takes a lot longer than if everything was rotating at the same time. So in the lower unit here, we can have two planet gear sets going around the sun gears. That's low gear. We're making double the ratio. Then we can stop rotation on one. So there's only one planet set going around the sun. That's second gear. And we can lock them all together and everything turns at the same speed. So what turns the lower unit? Well, this is the forward drum. It is shafted into the torque converter. So the turbine and the torque converter, which is driven by the pump, we already learned that. When it starts to rotate, turns this shaft. With the clutch pack not applied, it just sits there and spins. With the clutch pack applied, it will drive the small shaft in the lower unit through the forward hub. That's splined to the internally of the clutches. The steels of the clutch pack are splined into the drum. And that's how that works. And this is on in all forward gears. The top of the clutch pack, instead of having just a pressure plate, it also has this ring, splined ring, which is splined into the direct clutch. This is a direct drum. On the front side, it has a hydraulic piston that applies a set of clutches. This set of clutches, again, is splined onto the forward clutch housing. So when this clutch set is applied, it is one with the forward drum. On the back side of the direct drum is the intermediate sprag that can be, this is what they call ineffective, where it can spin, and effective where it cannot. This is operated by the intermediate clutch pack. The intermediate clutch pack is applied by a piston located in the front of the center support and they are lugged to the case. And the direct drum drives the large shaft in the lower unit. Using the application chart, you can see in what gear 
what is doing what. This is also handy for diagnostic because when something is missing, like second gear, you can see what's supposed to be working and it's going to be one of those areas where the trouble is. So that is a high altitude flyover of how a Turbo 400 works. We didn't hit all the little parts, but it gives you a basic idea of what's happening under the floorboard when you clunk it into gear. In the upcoming week, I'll try to hit a few more of the viewer suggested videos, which is awesome. I'm glad for suggestions. It helps. It lets me at least have a clue what people want to see. Because I do cover a lot of different subjects, but the Turbo 400 transmission seems to be the most popular one. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll be looking at you in a few days.